This video demonstrates how to inspect and repair a loose piston on the Model 691 compressor. Please refer to the Installation, Operation and Maintenance Manual, item IE101, for detailed information and maintenance schedule on these compressors. The IOM manual may be downloaded from Corkin's website at corkin.com. Please note these important safety tips. Periodic inspection and maintenance of the compressor is essential. Equipment installation, operation, and maintenance should only be performed by qualified personnel. All procedures must comply with the Corkin Installation, Operation, and Maintenance Manual, applicable local codes, and safety standards. The transfer of toxic, flammable, or explosive substances is always at the user's risk. Review the Installation, Operation, and Maintenance Manual before performing any maintenance procedures. Corkin vertical compressors are designed with four major components, the head, cylinder, crosshead guide, and crankcase. The head contains the discharge and suction valves. Each valve assembly consists of a valve, valve cage, valve hold down screw, valve plate and bolts, and cap. Below the head is the cylinder which contains the pistons and piston platforms. Next is the crosshead guide. On the crosshead guide is the Corkin nameplate with model and serial number stamped on it. Bolted to the side of the crosshead guide are two multi-purpose compressor wrenches. They are used for removing hold down screws, adjusting packing, and removing packing barrels. At the bottom is the crankcase. Inside the crankcase is the crankshaft and oil pump. On the exterior of the left side, you'll find the oil filter, oil pressure gauge, and bearing carrier. On the right side of the crankcase, the crankshaft extends beyond the bearing cover with a flywheel attached. Repairing a loose piston in a Corkin vertical compressor requires the following tools. A 12-point wrench or socket and standard socket or box wrench. A 12-point extension for the torque wrench. An adjustable wrench. A Phillips head screwdriver. Channel lock pliers side cutters, the multi-purpose compressor wrench which is mounted on the side of the compressor, and a torque wrench. Before performing any maintenance procedures, make sure the compressor and system have been depressurized. When performing a loose piston inspection, it is not necessary to remove the piping flanges from the compressor head. Keep hands, work area, tools, and parts clean. This video features the Model 691 compressor. There are nine steps for repairing a loose piston. There are two pistons in a Model 691 compressor. Begin by removing the valve caps, valve hold down screws, valve plates, and valves from each side of the compressor head. Remove the valve cage, then remove the valve assembly. If the valve gasket is not attached to the bottom of the valve, reach into the opening and remove the gasket. Repeat this process for the other side and remember to remove the valve gasket. Rotate the flywheel until the piston is at top dead center as shown. Insert a Phillips head screwdriver or a T-handle Allen wrench into one of the socket head screws on top of the piston. Check for piston movement by rocking back and forth. This piston has little to no movement and does not need to be tightened. Move to the opposite side of the compressor and rotate the flywheel until the second piston is top dead center as shown. Once again, insert a Phillips head screwdriver or a T-handle Allen wrench into one of the socket head screws on top of the piston. Check for piston movement by rocking back and forth. This piston has too much movement and is out of specification. A loose piston causes a loud knocking sound during operation. To access the piston, remove the piping flanges from the compressor head before unbolting the head. Use a 12-point wrench or socket to remove the ferry head bolts securing the head. There are two bolts on top and 12 bolts on the bottom. After all of the bolts have been removed, lift the compressor head off the cylinder. Note the O-ring surrounding each cylinder opening. 
Remove all but two of the socket head screws and lock washers from the piston. Make sure the two remaining screws are loose and not attached to the respective threads. Raise the two screws slightly and squeeze while lifting the piston from the piston platform as shown. Make sure none of the lock washers remain in the head. Inspect each of the three piston rings and notice the step cut design. This is a wear indicator. With a new piston ring, the gap of the step cut should be fully closed. The gap will open as the piston ring wears. When the gap reaches an open position of 50%, it is no longer within tolerance and must be replaced. Remove the shim from the piston platform. Note, this shim is used to set top dead center for the piston. Inspect the piston platform for movement. If there is movement, the castle nut must be tightened. Prior to tightening the castle nut, the roll pin must be removed. Use a pair of channel locks to offset the roll pin. Complete the removal with a pair of side cutters as shown. Remove the castle nut using a 7 8 socket. Carefully inspect the piston platform for damage and replace if necessary. Install the piston platform and tighten the castle nut to the torque value listed in the IOM manual. There should be no movement in the platform after it is tightened. Tighten to the torque specification as a minimum. If the pinhole is not aligned or the opening in the castle nut is slightly past a hole, tighten to the next hole. After the castle nut is properly aligned, insert a new roll pin and push through the bolt using a pair of channel locks. The roll pin should overhang evenly on each side of the castle nut. Place the shim on the piston platform and align with the piston mounting holes. Before installing the piston, make sure the step cut openings of the piston rings are staggered 180 degrees from each other. Do not align the step cut gaps in the same positions. Prior to inserting the socket head screws and lock washers, apply a small amount of thread lock. Tighten and torque to the specification listed in the IOM manual using a star pattern. Before installing the head, make sure both O-rings are inserted into the grooves on top of the cylinder as shown. Carefully place the head on top of the cylinder and align with the mounting holes. Begin by inserting the two ferry head mounting bolts in the center of the head. The remaining ferry head bolts are inserted underneath through the top of the cylinder and attached to the underside of the head. Snug each bolt using a 12-point wrench as shown. Torque each bolt to the specification listed in the IOM manual using a crisscross pattern. Note, in order to reach the bolts between the cooling fins, a 12-point extension must be used with the torque wrench. Start with the two center head bolts and move to the outside. After the head has been secured using the proper torque specification, it is time to install the valves. Begin by installing a new valve gasket on the shoulder of each opening. Install the valve assemblies followed by the valve cages. Before installing the valve plates, make sure the O-rings are properly installed in the grooves. Install the hex head bolts into the valve cover plates and torque to the value listed in the IOM manual. Install the valve hold down screws with the notches pointing up. Use the multi-purpose compressor wrench to make sure the hold down screws are tight. Insert the O-rings into the valve caps and tighten to the torque value listed in the IOM manual. This completes the procedure for replacing a loose piston in a Model 691 compressor.
Visit the website often for the latest technical updates and news on all of Corkin's products.